Hi, it's Neil from 80s Casuals. We're here to cut a new series on Meet the Customer. Today we've come to Wales to meet Brett Johns in a pub to have a chat about his life as an MMA fighter and really his love for 80s casual classics. We're here today with MMA fighter Brett. So Brett, tell us a little bit about yourself. I grew up in Swansea, big Swansea city farm myself. I've been collecting sort of 80s casual gear for about seven, eight years now. I, I was inspired by 80s clothing, by films. And like I said, still collecting to this day. Have you got sort of styles you wear for different occasions or, you know? Ritual of mine on, on Christmas to to wear my uh, Search to Sydney Orion top. But the full the full tracks on Christmas, you know? Because oh, right. there is Christmas. Okay. So, <laughs> so that was inspired solely because of obviously the film in 2009 uh, yeah. with um, with Paul Anderson and Cam McNabb wearing that. And the fact so, that I sell it to him. And that? you, yeah, yeah. yeah the but, shop, the, yeah, the yeah. shopkeeper. Bag yeah. it up. <laughs> How much was it, 38 quid? No, no, that's the trainers. Yeah. Well, put that in the bag. All, all this stuff has come from films, you know, I think a lot of the guys nowadays would get into football and see the way that the, the lads were dressed and they'd copy them guys. But for me, it was the other way around with films. That, that's what, that's how I got into it, you know? The first film we all properly saw, which which had this element of the clothing, was, was the business with Danny Diane. The Nick Love films with the business, the firm. I guess what you could say was, you could watch the film and then if you liked something, you could go on a certain website, yeah, a certain website, one. and um, you could go and buy that track top, and, and that's what I loved really about it. And um, every single time I'll watch them films, you'll, you'll instantly see me go on on uh, these casual oh, classics yeah. to, to pick something up, you know. The business set in Spain, I've seen you wear the shorts and stuff, <laughs> so there's a particular time for for that, really. I love the, the short shorts, unfortunately, I do need a better tan wearing the short right. shorts. I was a 90s baby, so I wasn't even involved in the 80s at all, but the sort of collection that I've got is based off people like yourselves opinion on the 80s and a lot of other guys like even some of the football lads in Swansea with me have their own outlook on the 80s and I try and match it up as best as possible you know so keep to know a bit about yourself and the old MMA background and how it all started really I was four years old started judo I was I was quite I think my mother said I was quite painfully shy kid. I'd have a problem with a couple of the local bullies as well, you know. My mother put me in for like the self-defense element and I did judo from like four to 16 years old. Right. Did, did, did okay on a regional level. And at the age of 16, I found MMA and uh, I went to my first house party. Quite different. Um, there's elements of judo in the sport, right? You know, mixed martial arts or MMA or, or UFC. You're wrestling, you're judo, you're just Brazilian Jiu Jitsu, yeah. and it's mixed in with the taekwondo, kickboxing, boxing. It's all mixed in. Judo is like an Olympic sport. As yeah, well, yeah, yeah, judo, freestyle wrestling, and I, I, I think yeah, that was my that was my main goal was to head to the 2012 Olympics. Well, mostly, yeah. But then the closer I was getting to 2012, my, I, I was miles away. I was absolutely miles away, and that was the point where I, I discovered MMA, and that was the. the to switch over then from judo yeah. into mixed martial arts, you know. I wanted to do mixed martial arts for one sole purpose, and that was to win a belt. Right. I think everybody would love to win a belt. Yeah. It's quite a cool thing. And I won my belt after five amateur fights, and I thought, do you know what? I'm quite good at this. I've, I've been good at many things in my life, Neil. Not many things. And uh, so, is this a local club? Yeah. So at the time, I was based in in, in Swansea. I've, I've now recently, since 2012, uh, 2020, moved to a gym up in Abbasleary called Shaw Mixed Martial Arts. They produced, as of right now, four UFC fighters. It's a it's a pretty big deal. But I went five and zero as like an amateur, right. and then went to eight, seven, eight and zero as a pro, and then won my first world title. Then I did another fight, and then I went to America for the first time, won my second world title. And I think at that point it was like, well, what's next? What is professional? Just to get my head around, but like, what does it really mean? Like, yeah, I mean, you're obviously earning a living. Yeah, well, not at that point, you know, I was, no. a two, I was a two time world champion and I didn't have a penny in the bank. Really? Yeah, I think my first ever world title, I think I fought twice in one night and I walked out there with a check of uh, £2,250. How are you managing to buy track tops? Well, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> I said that, 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 was, that was Christmas coming into it and oh. uh, give my mother a pretty big list. By the time I won the second world title, though, everybody's dream then after that, I think, okay. would be to reach the UFC. First ever Welsh guy to fight in the UFC and uh, since then it's kind of Skyrocket. So there's, the UFC is there's far more money in it generally. A lot of guys would, would recognize UFC. It, 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 the best way I can describe it is every other promotion that I was with before them was like League One. Right. And then the UFC would be the Champions League. I'm at the stage of my life now where I'm 31 years old. 
you know, and I'm thinking, yeah. what's next? I think yeah. I'm going down the, the route of coaching. I don't know that yet, but I feel like that's where you my... Do, you've done a little bit of coaching? I have, yeah. I've, I've coached a few guys and uh, they, they're doing fairly well, you know, and it's, uh, it's something i got a passion for. I'm also doing a little bit of refereeing now and then, so I think I'll have some sort of involvement in the sport, um, even when I retire. I was intrigued to know more about your, your days with the lads at football and probably like relating it to your sort of ambassador role with Weekend Offender really, so I don't know, like typical day out with the Swansea boys and stuff. Obviously being involved with the Swans boys then, you know, we come across some, some brands and um, Weekend Offender was one of the brands. Sam Jones uh, had reached out because he was also uh, a fighter. Oh, right. The only issue with Sam is that he's a Cardiff fan and I'm a Swans fan. Right. But somehow we've made it work, right? Yeah. Okay, so there's no, there's no issue at all. For anyone wondering, Sam's the original owner of Wicked yeah, Defender. It, yeah. They wanted to come on board. They, they did. Um, it was me, uh, Orban Elliott, and Jack Shaw who they asked all Welsh fighters who represent the Valley Boys, and then Orban is, is a Merthyr lad, and that's exactly where Sam Jones comes from. Okay. They did a fight T-shirt for me a few years back, and then this year they gave me the. They sort of said, look, you can go and design your own shirt and see how it gets yeah. off. And I inspired my, my Weekend Offender shirt on the, the, the Napoli uh, home kit. I think it was the 91 to 92 season. It sold out within I mean, two we, weeks. We've stocked a brand on and off for years, but honestly, whether lockdown, whether the last two or three years, they just now the whole t-shirt thing, whether it's football, music, and we've certainly got that customer. So no, it's been amazing. And then the jackets, just like, they've just nailed it on the sort of, below 100 quid level, you know, and we just sell a load of it, decent looking coats of good money, you know. Football, away days for me is a, is a big thing, it's, it's kind of like my little break away from... So you like a small big, gang, big gang, a bit of both, or...? Yeah, a bit of both, yeah, you know, um, the, boy, yeah, the boys that I go away with, again, the people who kind of inspired me in, into into his gear, they're, they're mostly older lads. I think I'm one of the youngest of the lot, right. really, you know. We've been on plenty of good little away days, you know. Some I can speak about, some I can't speak about, yeah. but a notable one for me would probably be Millwall away, uh, 2018. Fantastic little away day. Um, You've got a nice picture of you on there. Yeah, I think so, yeah. That's the one with the, with the, the nice little uh, police thing behind me, you know. We had a man sent off about seven minutes in, oh, went one nil down but then come back and one two one. So oh, it was a good little day. day. It was a good little day out it was. You've got some nicknames, the lads. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. So there's a couple of nicknames there. Um, two of my closest friends, Smithy, which is the yeah, easy typical. one. Yeah. Uh, Chili. Do you know what, that's the only nickname I'm not too sure about, you know, why he's had that nickname. Another one would be Stacko and um, Turkish, which is a good one. Excellent. down to the uh, town called Malice launched Nick Love and uh, we both turned up in our gold elite the door, which obviously is the ultimate casuals trainer. I know you got to wear Nick Love, uh, meet Nick Love even, not wear Nick Love. You're a big fan, it's inspired you, so uh, how was that for you? Firstly, thank you yeah. for inviting me up there. You know, uh, Some people nowadays struggle to find an identity. But for me, my story with identity is, is definitely influenced by Nick Love and the the films that, that he's made, you know. My top five films, Nick Love has directed, produced and written in three of them, you know what yeah. I mean? So, um, and to meet him for the first time, I think a lot of lads would have heroes, like, you know, for example, your hero is... Probably Keegan and Dalgleish. Yeah, uh, yeah. And Seth Coe was probably one <laughs> in the early days. My hero growing up would probably be Nick. And what? it was strange to say that, because a lot of guys would have their heroes to be like David Beckham, or they'd have their heroes to be like certain fighters, Conor McGregor, yeah. once in a lifetime experience for me personally. He's a lovely guy, I know, and I know he was pleased to meet you, he was pleased with anyone that was coming along. That was I always remember he had a bit of a shiner. Oh, do you remember yeah. seeing that? Like, he had a bit of a shiner. Yeah. Did you ask him why? Yeah, I did, yeah. I, I, didn't, I didn't ask. <laughs> I, 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 Taking a cloak and he said he still boxes. On one hand he's boxing, on the other hand he's going to yoga with a missus. <laughs> yeah. yeah, that's what he does. If I never see him again, I'll be very thankful for that for that two minutes I had with him. Yeah, well, I've been talking. I know you might want to appear in a movie, but yeah. there might be a little chance. I think a little cameo for you. To be Let's continued. See how we get on. To yeah. be continued. I've got all my own sort of favourite trackies in the wardrobe. I, I, they're not things I wear all the time, mate. Eh? I'm not going to lie, but I'll have occasions and I'll put them on and I'm proper into what I'm wearing, whether it's lads on, on the stag do or whatever. Imagine you've had your call up for Nick Love's movie. It's a football movie, modern day. You've got a choice of wardrobe. 
What do you reckon you're going to be wearing? For me, I'd have to say it's a new piece I've got. I'm sure you might have one of these pieces as well. But I'll have to go for the, the Serge de Chini uh, Willander. Yeah, yeah. People think I've got it the Welsh colours, but I am got the Welsh colours. It's more of the Italio, Italian colours. Yeah. You know? And I'd have to chuck on a pair of Lewis Cores with it as well. And you'll probably still see me wearing the same trainers no, <laughs> as I'm wearing today. But the Willander is incredible. Like, um, I imagine it was late casuals, I think like 85, but it was a take on a, an earlier style from the 80s, but every time we've put a colour out, it, it just sells out in no time. Conscious we touched on music a couple of times, like with the Weekend Offender t-shirts and stuff. Have you got had an interest in 80s music and just generally bands today? Yeah, growing up with my, with my stepdad, uh, the 80s music was always a, a big thing for him, and um, watching the films afterwards as well, you know, you relate to the music. Wham, for a start, for stars, yeah, yeah. Wham, you know. Uh, Definitely you know, good for the shorts. Yeah, fr yeah. Uh, Frankie Goes to Hollywood. Blinded. Some absolute cla yeah. some classics. Can't go too far without mentioning Oasis, Liam and Noel. Yeah. And I've gone into the newer stuff now because some of the, the, the football lads with us as well, they're into Scottish singers, Jerry Cinnamon. I think a yeah. lot of guys have heard of him. And a new kid coming on the scene right now called Dylan John Thomas. He's doing well. Yeah, yeah so yeah. I'm off to watch him in November, so I'm, I'm looking forward to that. Any other acts you have been to watch? Yeah, or? the Sherlock's. I think they're, they're playing. Coming. Yeah, they're playing, they're playing in Swansea and coming yeah, up good as well. Yeah, 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 yeah so yeah. then music's like as my secondary thing, but you know I'm a big fan of music and big fan of, yeah. of especially that type of music. Oh, the great thing for us with music, I just find that whole scene that they like the football is one thing, but the music scene is really supportive of the whole casual, tracky, retro scene. So there's, there's a serious amount of people that go to the gigs. In the clothes, yeah. yeah, a band that I'm, I'm fairly close with, they've supported uh, Liam Gallagher, Nebworth, Pastel, so yeah, they're, yeah. They're, they're doing really well as well. I think they're on, on tour currently. Right, Brett, proper made up. You've come for the first series in our Meet the Customer. Grateful for you coming today and bringing some bits along and all the stories you've had to tell. And all the best in the future, mate. Thank you, man. Thanks for everything. Thank Excellent. you. Thank you.